What is up, everybody? What's good? What's up? <laughs> um, I'm Steven, um, AKA Steve Sweatpants. I'm a born and raised from New York, born in Brooklyn, raised in Jamaica, Queens, and I currently live in Bed-Stuy, and I'm in one of my favorite cities in the world. Honestly, it's not an ad, but I'm in Seattle. And you know, we just roam in the streets, and I'm gonna show you guys a couple of tips and tricks that really helped me out a lot. All of these tips and tricks it can be used at your own will, and you don't have to follow them in any kind of uh, specific order. Empathy is key. Pacing, persistence, and patience. You know, gear focus and knowing your gear and understanding why you use that certain kind of gear. The little things, and then one of the easiest things, like basically, make you feel like you're just pushing a button on your camera is subliminal but intentional framing. And I feel like each of these tips are, they're not like the most scientific explanations for everything that you're gonna hear, but these are kind of the things that make you feel really comfortable and it, it just gives you a better perspective on shooting something that's such a, such a fast pace. And it's kind of a brutal environment with street photography because it's so, um, there's so many different variables, like uh, you can easily get discouraged if you're, not, if you're not doing something that you feel is right for yourself. So um, following these little, uh, these little tips can just help hold you down throughout this class and, um, and hopefully it helps out. All right, so we will hit the streets today. Um, and this is my setup that I usually kind of go with. I travel really light. I don't really like to have that many things to weigh me down. Uh, a couple of reasons. Um, one, I just don't want to have that much stuff in my, in my hands. I want my hands to be free as possible. Um, two, I think that it's kind of uh, weird to walk around, walk around with a lot of kind of uh, expensive gear and merchandise with you. So I try to be very tactful with these situations. When you're traveling around in, especially when it comes to street photography, just be very aware of how much stuff that you're actually bringing with you. So um, that's why I travel with these couple of items. So this is my fanny pack, I definitely need this. Um, don't judge me, but this is very, very important to me. Um, I'm able to fit my camera, my lens, uh, my Mophie, and my Nintendo Switch into this uh, little fanny pack. So um, no matter which one you get, make sure it's big enough so you can put your stuff inside of it. Uh, my favorite camera to use right now is the A7R3. Um, this is my everyday camera. Um, also on the bottom of it is this leather kind of protector thingy um, that I got off, uh, got off of Amazon. Um, it's pretty, it was, it's fairly, it's, yeah, it's pretty moderately priced, but it's really important because I put my, my camera in my bag or if I put my camera in my fanny pack, uh, I don't want to destroy the bottom of my camera. So this is pretty cool to have on there and I could take my battery out. The reason why I went go with the uh, Sony, Sony cameras in general is just because the main thing is the weight and the compatibility. Uh, it's just really easy to carry around. It's really lightweight. Um, even though the 85 is a little bit heavier than um, the other lenses, uh, this camera is just something that I can walk around for three to four hours in a day and not feel too weighed down. Um, so that the Sony model is still full frame, it's mirrorless, um, and it's just super fast. It works really well in low light situations and everything that I shoot for, even though that I'm not super technical, um, it's perfect for that. So that's why I really stick with the Sony A7 um, R3. Um, I used the Sony A7 II for a long time and that was my go-to camera. So, and that one is excellent as well too. So but just anything in the Alpha family, um, those are definitely my go-to cameras. The, and the lens that I tend to use every single day is the 85 1.4. Um, this is one of my favorite lenses because it, is, it does everything that I really need, need it to do. Um, if I want to do something a little bit more intimate, the 85 is tight enough so I can be pretty close. Um, if I wanted to do something a little bit further away that I could just step back and still have a really tight composed shot. So the, my 85 is my go-to. But the 25 is great because um, you know, even though the 85 is a really great lens, it's really tight and I don't want to, uh, sometimes you just don't want everything to be so, such a tight shot. So the 25 F2 is a, uh, a decent enough uh, kind of uh, focal length that I can have something that's a little bit wider and I'll be able to capture something that's like a way more intimate like interior shot or something that's more of a building or architectures or you know just having a little bit different flavor so uh, my 25 is another uh, really tight lens to go to. I have this one lens theory that I don't like having too much uh, too many products with me I like to focus on one lens because it kind of just lets me focus on the day and and I had to change to the situation and not focus on changing my lenses too much. I try to stick with that as much as possible but in situations where I'm traveling or if I'm out of town or, or if just if I'm trying to do something a little bit different, I'll, I would bring one other lens with me. So I usually like to have something that's tighter and wide. 
Uh, so the tight lens would be the 85 that I would usually go with, and then something wider, I would shoot with the 25. This is uh, my baby, my Nintendo Switch. So the Nintendo Switch is something that helps me pass my time. Um, for photo shoots or if I'm waiting for like one person to walk into a particular spot, I will play Mario Tennis or like Dead Cells for a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one of the things that you know helps me pass the time and my go-to uh, savior on the road. My Nintendo Switch and what everybody needs in the social media age is a Mophie. Uh, this is um, a, specifically an anchor. Um, and this helps me charge my camera actually, which is really cool about the Sony cameras that you could charge them with a mini USB. So the Movi helps me with that. It, uh, charges, it charges my phone and, you know, it just makes sure that I can actually talk to people um, and not have dead phone products. So it isn't my essential. This uh, camera strap has been with me now for damn near like three years now. I think people actually could, you know, call me out on the street for seeing me this thing, for seeing this camera strap now. But having a really sturdy camera strap is really important. I'm just going to end up probably just going to put my switch into my bag because it is it's very sensitive. And then I'll you put my Mofi in the back. And if, since I'm going to shoot with my 85 today, I'll just keep the 25 in my bag for the time being. Um, this is how you properly equip the fanny pack. Uh, fasten this puppy, and then uh, we'll be good to go. I think mainly like the coolest part about repetition is that uh, there's like it does like a little uh, trick on your eyes. That it kind of your eyes always gravitate towards like you know like symmetrical things and like things that have like kind of repetition qualities. So that's why I was attracted towards the stairs like immediately because of you know the way that it's structured, the way that it lines up. And then it turns into like a game, like everything in my life is a game pretty much. So I was trying to play the game of like, what can I line up really cool with like, you know, the stairs or like, and having like really cool lines of repetition. And that goes into like the whole kind of intentional framing, the concept of um, basically uh, finding things that are already framed and for you, that's really well. Um, and then you do have to do less work and you're just trying to find a really dope moment about it. So hopefully I find somebody who looks really cool and I, I try to find myself like a, I try to find like a proper position for myself uh, to li like line up with. Like the way that these stairs are kind of like slanted actually look really tight. This tree, like this doesn't like, we don't really get stuff like this in New York. So I kind of gravitate towards that kind of aspect also. Like hopefully this lady doesn't fall down <laughs> while, she, while she's going across the street. Looks dangerous. All right, so right now I'm shooting at a, uh, I got F2, 400, and the tree gives it a little bit of kind of extra funk. Yeah, I like to like kind of like give and take like with situations like this, uh, especially when I like I start first shooting for the day. I like to call it, I think, I think everybody feels like they have to warm up a little bit. So when I find like a spot that's like immediately gravitating like towards me, like I try to like warm up at this spot a little bit and try out a couple of different angles. And then um, it gives me a little bit more confidence for myself to go out and then start trying different things and uh, you know just experimenting more with the environment and stuff so like having a location like this like right away is like it's, just, it's worth checking out for a bit to see if um, we can get something cool to happen or somebody to stroll by or, or all that other good stuff so like this staircase is crazy if somebody comes down this one or somebody walks up, like in front of it like that's an easy banger easy banger oh, this lady looks like she's on a mission let's see So I'm still going with F2. Oh. All right, that was it. Um, the really cool part about like one of the tips I was trying to talk about like intentional framing is uh, uh, finding situations where like you don't have to really do that much and it's already really gratifying with you know, location, uh, the thing that I mentioned before with repetition, um, like the overall vibe. Um, and what was so perfect about that shot is that uh, at the same time someone just literally came right down the stairs right down the middle. It wasn't probably like, you know, the guy was really cool, so he didn't have anything that really stood out or a lot for him to wear, but um, it was still with exactly what I was looking for, um, which was really cool to have somebody walk right down the stairs. So uh, the next question that I would like go for post-production like post is like, am I gonna go black and white with that because of his outfit or 
I'm, I'm, I'm not going to try to edit it in color to like see if I can, you know, find anything that was kind of satisfying. But even, you know, talking out loud, I'm thinking about a black and white photo already because of his outfit wasn't just that, it was kind of bland and it matched the environment a lot. But regardless, that's exactly what I wanted. So in photography, you kind of have to like be happy with what you get sometimes and like <laughs> not spit in the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's so funny. I kind of want to see if I can get one more person though. Like I'm kind of a. Oh, look at that! <laughs> that was tight. That was it. Um, it was a little bit more it because I had a better uh, kind of uh, positioning. So when, especially when it comes to uh, shooting like some kind of locations where you know I guess like gratifying kind of like line setups and repetitions is making sure that you have enough like points of texture. So the stairs have, you know, a really dope kind of uh, zigzag theme going already. And I was composing it in a weird way, so I wasn't getting enough uh, of clarity with my photo. But having that building behind it adds another level of texture to the, uh, the shot. So I have like two really uh, cool lines of repetition going on with the building in back of it. Oh, look at this dude. This guy's even cooler. And he's eating some chips. Oh, that's even, that was, that was actually even better. But then like the same kind of, you know, thing where you're just basically waiting for moments where you have really cool dynamic people going into like dyna dynamic situations. What I really mean by like getting, being yourself influenced by the situation is that uh, I feel like in with street photography when it comes to documenting you don't want it to you don't want to change uh, the variables too much and le letting them know that the variables know that you're there. Meaning that like if the subject if this if the subject that you're shooting is really aware that you're there in some situations sometimes it could take away from the photo. Um, so when it comes to situations like this, to be across the street and like kind of like scout something out and like you know frame something intentionally and like, and kind of have things walk into your frame rather than forcing them into your frame, um, you could get more of like a genuine reaction and it it could be way more of a like documenting life rather than like you know than you're influencing it so much. Um, I, I'd rather be like the fly on the wall situation where you know this is a definite example of something like that. So yeah, that's why like situations like this makes it a lot easier, way more dynamic to do something like that. So, oh, <laughs> you think this is so funny? That's cool. At least I got something. At least I got something. So like when I was looking for a shot like this, like basically uh, what I ended up doing, maybe I should do it a lot for you a little bit. With this kind of framing, exactly, I like to have some kind of balance. Um, and then I'm looking for somebody to either walk into the first box or the second uh, box. So that being like the one to the right or the one to the left. So the shot that I got before, uh, we got homegirl, she got into the second box. It would be cool to get somebody into the first one, but I'm, I'm not stressing it, honestly. It's not a big deal. I just like, sometimes it's not always about like how crazy the photo is, it's just like, I just want to get like, uh, like with the stickers was like going on at the time, so. I think a lot of the times with, uh, when I go out to shoot, like sometimes you feel pressure so much to like try to, you know, I mean, try to get like the most epic shots all the time and then like, you know, try to get all these crazy like, you know, never before seen moments, but like, you know, it really just comes down to like, you know, just taking a stroll in the day and like kind of seeing how, where it flows. Um, so like, you know, there is some situations where you get antsy, but um, no, I just really like to keep it really chill and I don't want to like force myself to like, you know, shoot something that I don't actually think I like just because like you're shooting it because you think everybody else would like it. Yeah, so I'm just trying to like, feel like, you know, see where the wind takes me and like, you know, figure out where the next good photo is for myself, so. Oh, it never, it's never as sharp as you want it to be. Right now I'm just trying to find a place with like some, uh, like pretty much like a good vibe of uh, a place with like a, where it has a somewhat of like some good, really good texture and like a, a place where maybe there's like a little bit of a angle where I can have some kind of a, you know, a dynamic kind of moment where I can have somebody walking into the frame. Like, oh, like, seeing something like this, like, people under the walkway, like, like oh, this looks really tight. Oh, 
like I like taking pictures of uh, like uh, all the construction sites because uh, it's probably not going to look the same in another like six months. So I like to kind of have a photo like, yeah, look, this is kind of what it looked like then. So like that's like goes like it's not the craziest shot, but it's like more or less like a personal kind of diary for myself. Like I love like like infrastructures and like you know highways and all that kind of stuff. Like this place is really tight to have. Uh, like the expressway kind of like just goes straight out into the city right to the water. That was cool to have somebody walking up the stairs with the flowers. Right now I'm trying to get my framing right a little bit. Um, at first, I, like I just love like, uh, like I said, like the intentional framing aspect of it, like there's something that's already kind of already structured for you. So when I get to situations like this, I'm, it first becomes a game of trying to figure out what's the right, you know, kind of uh, comp composition. When I was framing before, like a couple of my shots, I felt like I was shooting a little bit a little bit too down, focusing too many on too much on the white cars below me, when I should probably be framing a little bit more up and cut those cars out so I could give myself a cleaner shot and having somebody walking right through the frame. So they, you have like an easier message to kind of interpret, you know? So, and then I, I shoot in portrait mode a lot, especially with the 85, uh, because since it's such a tight lens, I feel like I get more real estate when I shoot like this way. So, um, Get one more. There we go. All right. Oh, you know, I want to try something actually. So, but in order to do a motion blur, you drop your shutter speed pretty slow. Um, so right now, it's uh, my my shutter speed is way too high, and then sometimes it helps to uh, bump up your f-stop as well too, especially when it's days like this. It's really bright outside. So you can bump your f-stop F -stop up and then bump your ISO down and try to, you know, compensate with something like that. So right now I dropped my ISO to about 100. My f-stop is on f9. I, need, I still need to go slower though. My shutter speed is at like 20 and 30 now. Drop my ISO a little bit more. It looks sick with the bus coming. Oh yeah, that's money. So I love these situations where like these noir style shots, um, where someone is kind of silhouetted where you have like a solid uh, palette behind them and then it's like something neutral in the front. It's like definitely this situation right here. So any way you shape it, it looks like a movie. Oh, look at the exchange, look at that. Look at that. Hey, Polly. Hey, Polly. We want to make a seal, Polly. Hey, Polly. You playing games? You playing games? I'm out of here. Scram. Um, so, everybody, this is Miriam. Um, we're going to be bothering Miriam today. Um, we're going to do like a little shot where we're going to set up a, a, a dynamic kind of shot where she's going to be walking under uh, the trestles. Um, a little jaywalking for this purpose. Um, but it's going to look really cool to have it symmetrical and lined up but under the... Uh, the viaduct. So, thank you for you know coming out and, yeah. and helping out. Ready? Yeah. Uh, one more time. That was nice and smooth. You're a professional. Um, thank you, by the way, for risking your life for me. Uh, <laughs> No, when you uh, out shooting with friends make a, makes it a lot easier, uh, especially with situations when you're trying out, want to try out something that's a little bit different, um, and then you're trying to like you know equate all the variables of like you know different people in the street and walking around, um, having somebody like Miriam or like a friend close by, uh, it just makes the situations a lot easier. That's sweet. A lot of my, like I said, a lot of my photography is gut feeling stuff. So a lot of it is not like I, I am thinking, but I'm just more or less just going with my intuition a lot of the time. So like 
I'm still even like even like as this is going by, like I'm still like just watching like a bunch of people just still like going back and forth across that crosswalk because it just feels like that's like one of the most like the busy busiest locations. So like that's why it's really cool to have Miriam, uh, you know, reenact some of like some of the hustle and bustle because like you know it's just a constant pace over here. So it feels like it doesn't feel that much different from whatever would be happening on a day to day basis. Like she did did it again, like you know. Like, <laughs> So we went to First Avenue and then uh, we stumbled upon like one of the coolest pair of stairs I've ever seen in my life. Um, and then that was a, a really good place to start off with, um, especially when it comes to uh, intentional framing, especially for me, um, warming up as a photographer sometimes, uh, you know, it, it takes it a different amount of time for everybody to warm up. So going into a situation where you can have a really cool set of stairs so we can you know, work on, a, on an intentional framing and work on shots with like really cool styles of repetition and and having your subjects walk into the frame and not making it so much more difficult for myself. Um, it was a really, really good situation to walk into um, and try out, a lot, uh, try out a couple of different shots. So um, from that location, we kind of, you know, started to wander down a little bit and we stumbled, stumbled upon a other couple of really cool spots. Um, some situations to having more people walk into the frame and also walking by the viaduct and, you know, trying a couple of different, th uh, different things out over there as well, too. So. Um, a lot of the situations today was, uh, you know, it was really cool to uh, kind of observe Seattle on the level of being a fly on the wall rather than, you know, try to force everything every time. So uh, it was really cool to have like our first day to shoot out with something like this. Uh, the pictures that I think that are going to turn out um, as some of my favorites is definitely the, the ones from the stairs a little bit earlier where um, I feel like there was um, one of the earlier shots was a woman walking down right in the middle of the stairs. I mean, a couple of the shots by the viaduct, um, having the you know, situations, having people like either like riding their bikes across or trying a couple of different the, the slow shutter shots. I think um, some of those might have turned out halfway decent. <laughs> well, hopefully, um, mainly because like you know, you, I like the location a lot and I like the vibe and the energy that it's giving off. So um, it, it gets uh, easier to set up situations like that where it feels like you're gravitated towards them. You know, sometimes it's like, you know, it's a tough game of photography because you like, there's expectations that you don't, you know, that you don't reach all the time. Um, but then something can happen and somebody could walk into your frame and then, or, you know, the situation arises where you feel like this is the dynamic moment that you're looking for. So, um, so you could quickly resolve um, all of that, you know, all those feelings immediately. So. No, I definitely, definitely say, you know, not being familiar with the area is like an easy answer, but at the same time, like, more or less it's just, you know, feeling out like what you're looking for out, looking for throughout the day is um, always kind of like a troubleshooting situation, you know, like, there's like a lot of like, you know, little dilemmas that pop up, but, um, you know, we definitely march through and we get through them and, you know, we're still out doing something that we love to do, taking photos. This is what like, I, I usually have like a, a pretty strict uh, rule on using one lens. Uh, I have like a one lens theory, basically like I don't like to uh, change too much um, of my focal, like my focal length throughout the day. Like I kind of like using like the certain kind of thing and adjusting to that to give, to make it easier for myself. This dude looks kind of sick actually. See, that was really cool because like that was literally like the uh the circle of life or the a square of life having a like, police officer and the city bus with the infrastructure and all the kind of things that are matching into the frame is like all the uh all the kind of check marks that i'm looking for when it comes to like shooting stuff like this throughout the day sometimes i get mad when uh you have that one perfect dude there like this guy with the orange vest was like he it was perfect with the colors and everything and then the other guy just came out of nowhere and kind of uh threw off the kind of uh, the key a little bit the she the she or the key whatever the shit is called but yeah this i love alleyways like i'm like i'm pretty much a sucker for alleyways all the time i think that's uh one of the one of the things that we have in new york but we don't have enough of uh, so anytime you get situations where you can come to seattle and shoot an alleyway, I definitely try to uh, capitalize on that every single time. There's a little puddle. I wonder if there's a re possible reflection. 
So I'm actually gonna change my lens. I'm gonna change it to something lighter. Um, <laughs> so I'm breaking my own rule. Basically said, I don't, I don't well, I hate rules anyway. So don't ever follow rules. When you get a shot like this, especially when you have a 25, um, when it comes to puddles, like I know it's like it's kind of a cliche and a gimmick kind of thing, but when it comes to situations like that, I look for like the texture in the shot first, like in the foreground, uh, to see if it has anything that kind of like you can mask to make it look uh, cool if you were to flip it upside down to invert it. Um, so yeah, this puddle has like 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 pebbles and cobblestones and all that, you know, all those cute little stuff around it. So I basically just try to see at first like if it looks cool and looks tight and it looks kind of tight. And then I was probably gonna ask Miriam to walk. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like an exact spot though. Uh, like maybe like where that white spot is and then walk a little bit closer oh there we go okay so i can see a little reflection yeah i can see a little reflection it's not as good as i want it to be but it's something it is something Just, can you just put your hands up really quick to see if they, Maybe step a little bit closer. Like, I was trying to get like, basically you see like a silhouette and it looks like I'm gonna try to flip it upside down and maybe look like you're flying. Well, like when I came to this reflection shot, I was focusing more on the puddle. You know, like the, uh, the texture on the ground especially when it comes to like situations where uh, you know you want something a little bit more dynamic especially when you're dealing with not that much real estate um, it's always cool to find like uh, you know really cool textures that you can work with um, because when I invert the photo and you know crop out the bottom it's just gonna look way cooler to have like you know the hands like, the abstract looking hands and the feet and like it looks like you're gonna be stepping into like a different vortex kind of stuff so and it was a little nerdy, but it's worth a shot, you know, it's worth a shot. Especially, I guess, like in this day and age where everything is trying to you know, have like, you know, the most fire post or like, like the most, you know, traction on like the most impressions. I guess like what I love to document the most is like the little things of like the, the street shot, the street signs and like little like corners of architecture and like little pieces of texture or, you know, or just like even like just like little quality of life kind of things of somebody like a street artist or, or anything of that nature. So um, you might like, you, know, you might just see me snapping like a bunch of photos of like random stuff of, you know, just look up of buildings or like of street signs or stickers and stuff like that. And it's all because like, I kind of encompass all this stuff like in my day as like, of like my photo journal, if you will, of like all the kind of things that I love throughout the day. So it's really important to me to like, you know, not only look for like the most epic moments, but also to look for like the little, you know, little intricate details throughout the day. So I think stuff like that is really dope. Like even like little things, like just how the light is falling like at a certain time of day, you know, how that dude is falling down the Christian street. Um, I like this corner a lot because the way that the sun is hitting this building is literally like its own kind of like studio light. So um, it just gives it a really cool effect. This bird is crushing the street like as if it was a person. Are you serious? You see this? You see this bird? <laughs> it's so funny. This is like another thing, like I guess like it feels like the theme of the day is stairs, but like stairs are just one of the cool kind of things with like, it has a lot of really cool balance, a lot of like repetition, like it's, uh, the framing is really tight. People usually hang out around the stairs. Uh, there's a lot of motion, there's like a, so it was always encapsulated like, uh, 
especially I guess like Seattle has like a really <laughs> interesting stairs out here, honestly. But the one of the one of the coolest things about it is is just the, the way that people interact with them and how it just always composes in the frame so nicely and it's very like uh, packaged together really well. So that's why I've always kind of gravitated towards like the sets of stairs over here, particularly because of. Uh, a lot of the, it's all, it all comes down to framing again. You know, it just, it's, it's really composed really well with these uh, kind of shots. Um, so now it makes me want to change my lens again. <laughs> Back to my baby. I don't know what's crazier was the photo or those dudes on the little motorcycles. <laughs> but I, I think one of the most important part of like uh, the little things is like human interaction and like engaging with the uh, the community. Um, a lot of photography is a very intrusive uh, kind of practice, and like so, if people are willing to like interact with you and like you know, uh, I'm not saying be like the jolliest person ever, but like it's nice to have some kind of like. You know, human kind of relationship and human interaction with with people. So, um, yeah, just enjoy the day. And then, like, if somebody were to comment on something that's weird, don't act like you didn't see it. You know, like you should comment on it together. And then it kind of it's like one of those little things that brings everybody cl closer together, no matter what it is. Like we just saw a bunch of people on mini motorcycles. Like everybody can understand. Like that was weird. You know, so. It's, yeah, it's not rocket science, a lot of this stuff. It's really simple just to be a, a normal human being. So uh, if you see somebody smiling, say hello to them. If they, if they say something weird to you, just say something, say something weird back and like, you know, and it would, everything would just keep on flowing and like the earth won't stop spinning. So that's why I always like to joke around with people all the time because it's like, it's all good, you know? We're just shooting, we're just shooting, like we're just hanging out. All right, so um, right now we moved locations a little bit. Um, I was trying to, you know, trying to find like some different situations and you know, just a couple of different scenarios. So we just walked maybe about two, three blocks over to the pedestrian uh, bridge. Um, and I'm going to basically walk around and just scout the area, see what it looks like. Um, and then I'm going to try to sh try to shoot some shots from across the street. But I want to first kind of like you know, just see what the scene is like. You can, you can go, bro. It's all good. Don't let us stop you. We'll be here all day. Um, yeah, so we're gonna, I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna first check it out over here first and then I'm gonna cross the street and then check it out, so. Come on, vamanos. Everybody, let's go. It's pretty cool. Uh, somebody want, oh uh, my, my, my. I wish those lights were on. I like shots like this, I mean, it's just always like, uh, especially when it comes to city stuff, like, it's cool to get a balance of, uh, especially when you can get up, uh, you don't have to get on the rooftop all the time, you can just get some scenarios where you get like a really good footbridge and you can get really cool traffic. Uh, we have like an aerial like this, like a couple of aerials like, like this back home, like uh, the High Line back home is a really good spot to, um, the High Line back home is a really good spot to like kind of shoot over like a footbridge area so you can shoot a lot of foot traffic and all that good stuff. So like something like this is really tight to uh, do that over. And this, the light's getting a little bit better now. I just want that one person walking into the light. I just need one person. I just need one. Hello? Ha ha ha. Gotcha. I'm, I'm obsessed with getting that one person to walk right in the middle of the frame all the time. So I got the person to walk. It's like, ha, I got it. I'm gonna keep on walking down this way. <laughs> All right, sneakers are on the wire. Report sneakers are on the wire. And there are some Jordans. If you know anything about me, you know that I have too many pairs of sneakers. I love that shit, it's so good though. So good. So then I would try to probably eventually, like after walking down this footpath, I eventually like would make my way towards the street. Most likely over there because maybe it could line something up. But, but yeah, I like to keep on walking across as much as possible to see, you know, like any other like pretty cool shots. Like stuff like this too, like uh, sidewalks. 
it's another like easy kind of repetition kind of idea that I've always liked to have. Like so, like catching somebody really cool going through the sidewalk. So maybe if they have like a cool pattern on, it would be pretty tight. But we gotta we gotta wait till somebody actually goes through the sidewalk though. Are you gonna be there? Oh, maybe, maybe. Uh oh, we might get lucky. Ha, got him. I got another victim. That's pretty tight. So it's dope, like, so like, like all the kind of shots that you probably even see me shooting today is usually of people doing something because it just always feels better to shoot people doing stuff. So like, um, you're just finding really cool areas and situations to do it. So like, the li but like, you know, it doesn't have to be that kind of uh, mind blowing for me. It more or less has to be, you know, just like really good visual narrative for the day and i kind of feel like we, we're getting some of those photos today so i feel pretty satisfied from the shots that i'm getting so far so one of my main things that i uh, always gravitated towards to in photography for me is um not only just the unique moments which i you know we all try to strive for like you know getting the most unique moments as possible but i like the uh, the more personable relatable moments of the day that i feel that are uh way more relatable um because that's what I'm trying to achieve with my photography is to relate to people and be personable and, and interact uh, rather than uh, trying to be unique, um, that unique all the time. Like we are, we're already unique in nature because we're all different human beings. So like being relatable and personable is way more of a, a kind of attain uh, what I try to, you know, I guess communicate through my photography more or less. Um, yeah, because like I said before, like everybody, we already have a different perspective um, from the from the beginning, from Jump Street. You know, all of us are born uh, from different mothers. You know, we all have different circumstances. So like, why should we all have to worry about taking the same kind of photos? I mean, everything that we should go with should be kind of instinctual. And I go with my gut feeling all the time. And uh, a lot of that is because of the relatable, personable feelings, um, the sentimental moments um, that I'm trying to strive and capture rather than trying to make something that's so too unique all the time so there's nothing against it that's just more or less like my cup of tea and and then that's what I, I try to strive for in my photos so we uh, tackled a couple of things with uh, the little the little things um, topic um, I think I think it's really important to uh, keep it really vague when it comes to the, the, the little things because it can mean anything to anyone but one of the things that I like to focus on is is either uh, with small human interactions throughout the day or like the little things as in textures or like stickers or like different kind of architectural moments that, you know, of construction or, or anything like that. These are all the, like the little things that are, go are going throughout the day that are not all like of the epic moments, but are all of the really cool little moments that you can kind of document for yourself and keep in your pocket. So um, I think it's important just to look at all aspects of like the little things, whether it's uh, like I said, like the textures or it's just like through human interaction or like, you know, the sneakers hanging on the wire or something like that. Like all of these little uh, little tidbits for the day is really cool to like document and keep for yourself. So um, I always try to stay true to that and I always try to hold that really dear to me and um, it's just really important. And, you know, you get to create uh, photography moments throughout the day, especially depending on like what the light and the weather is. And we were dealing with cloudy textures all day. We were dealing with such an overcast. So like when you get the little bit of light to break out, I, you feel as glorious as the sun breaking out into the street. So um, that's why it's really cool to capture those moments. And uh, hopefully like if this day persists, like and the sun keeps on being stronger and stronger, we can keep on really getting you know some different type of shots with shadows and and balancing light and, and all that really cool fun stuff um even like looking right now like people look totally different walking in from the light over the pedestrian walkway um, opposed to it being like completely silhouetted out before so you know light's always fun it always changes so i could talk about it forever like it's like one of my favorite aspects of photography really want to get a shot of that monorail so decided to walk down a couple of blocks to see if I can get a better kind of uh, perspective to shoot the mono, mono uh, the monorail coming towards me so I'm trying to walk to this crosswalk so um, like as as fast as photography is like you do have to have some kind of uh, pacing uh, a pacing uh, persistence to it um, 
mainly because uh, there's so many different kind of uh, variables and effects that you want to have throughout the day that uh, sometimes um, you just have kind of you kind of have to wait it out a little bit to uh, get something that you want uh, particularly. Uh, so, like example for this shot, like I want one of the uh, I want a monorail coming into the frame, and I think that will look really dope because you don't really get to see stuff like that. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna wait it out. I don't care how long I have to wait here. If it's, it has to be 15 minutes or 15 hours, well, hopefully not 15 hours, but. I want to get. I want to make sure I get the shot. Um, this is another time that I like, uh, kind of like to like just observe all the kind of like other things that are around me too that kind of help pass the time. So, oh shit! Came too fast. Give you no sign. <laughs> like, it just pulled up. It's just like I'm just driving. So we're gonna try it again. I got something though. Not bad. You can do a little bit better. I got something that was actually not that bad, um, but I had in mind something a little bit different. So I kind of just wanted to try a couple of different scenarios uh, with the monorail. Like I had something that it kind of positions the driver with like a little bit of the. Like, uh, I don't even know what this is. Like, is this a trestle? But I want to get a little bit more of a perspective and not so much of the train itself. So let's see what happens. Um, I'm framing right now the uh, traffic light with the street to give it kind of like that triangle. And so when the monorail is coming over it, it just gives adds another layer. Oh. Yes! Yes! That was cool. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> that was worth it. So I, so the big thing with me, especially with a lot of situations, like I don't really like to, uh, I don't like to wait. So when it, when it comes to waiting for a spot, um, even if it's not as, I guess, like uh, as satisfying as you want it to be, uh, you just want to make sure that you can frame it as good as possible and, and have something that at least you feel like you accomplished something when you were at that, uh, like, you know, that exact location. So. It just like the persistence is like it just comes from waiting sometimes and I guess that is possibly like the hardest thing to do for myself is like to wait so uh, the persistence and pacing and all that stuff that goes all along with it is just uh, more or less uh, just for every photographer just to have like a, more or less like a really good resolve when it comes to trying to you know over overcome a difficult situation when you're shooting um, shooting something that you really want to capture uh, It's so silent also, like that's why I feel like uh, being another part of uh, pacing, uh, pacing and persistence is like your head has to constantly be on a swivel. Like uh, you have to, you know, it only is, uh, it only works as much as you actually are putting effort into it. So I feel like even if you feel like you get the shot, I, even if I say I get the shot, I probably don't really have the shot. I will keep on going back and back and over and over again to make sure that I try to capture it as many angles as possible. Um, and yeah, and then that's why I keep on when I keep I keep on walking up this block and further, and, you know, just to try to see how many different dynamic angles I can get with something like this. So, uh, oh shit, a seaplane just went right. That was sick. Ooh, that building looks crazy. Crazy. Just one, like one more crazy looking person to pass by. Just one. Pacing, patience, and persistence is, uh, it's, it's, it's probably one of the toughest things for me also, mainly because um, my patience is very thin. <laughs> 
Um, but like, when it comes to photography, like, it's uh, there are some moments that you have to kind of wait and see what happens instead of uh, trying to always like force the situation or, or try to speed things up. So like the situation with the monorail is a really good example of uh, kind of waiting to see what happens. Um, I uh, need to take a picture of this dude. He looks. He's a gangster. Um, the monorail situation was very specific because um, you're waiting for something like, specific to happen um, in, within like every 10 minutes or so and at the same time you're trying to uh, you know you're trying to compose your shots differently you're trying to make sure that you have the right frame um, but that at the same time is uh, I'm just happy to be able to get, get a really uh, a really tight photo of the monorail in the first place and hopefully something that was still like you know you know creatively satisfying for me and and at the end of the day it's all subjective anyway so um, a lot of the pacing and the persistence and the patience comes from um, more or less, you know, just your outlook on how it's going to be going throughout the day for you um, and, and what you're looking to shoot, especially when it comes to street photography or, or, or anything for that matter. And um, um, yeah, I just think it's really important to, you know, just how to have that kind of balance throughout the day. Um, it's kind of hard to uh, get really caught up into, you know, looking for a certain kind of shots or really getting disappointed that you don't get the shot that you're looking for. but. Um, if you're just a little bit, if you're a little bit of patient, if you're a little bit patient, and you have, you know, a willingness to like walk to different locations to make sure, to still make sure uh, that you be able to capture that, uh, I think that's really important just throughout the day, just to recognize and and just try to focus on. I think it's uh, I think it's really important to you know document all the beat up old looking buildings and especially in the areas where it's changing and there's a lot of gentrification, mainly because not. It's not about a pity party or, or anything like that. It's more or less just the, the documentation um, aspect of it. Um, all of this stuff is changing constantly, and, and it, it, it kind of sucks that nobody appreciates, you know, even like you know the, the old little building on the corner. Um, mainly because like that's a piece of history, and then that's something that's going to be changing because of the environment. And it's all good, but you know, if there was no photo of like you know the Franklin Apartments on the corner, like nobody would even knew what it would look like. And and not that, like not to say that it was the most important thing, but I think that when it comes to documenting documenting your neighborhood and documenting certain um, just certain things that are probably not the most glamorous, it just it's important to have uh, an element to uh, an element of being down to earth and showing it like you know where this stuff comes from um, because like all these photos will become old eventually, and then it will be really cool to look back on to see um, what it used to look like. I just think the street is pretty cool. I'm always suckers for like a, I'm always a sucker for a location like this where uh, it's like an alleyway shot with, uh, you know, something really dope in the background with like the buildings coming up or, or anything of that nature. So just wanted to see like what this looks like in frame. Not too much of it. I wish somebody would walk down there too, but. I want, I want somebody to do like something crazy, like somebody playing like a, a saxophone. <laughs> so I am going to, oh, this looks pretty cool. This dude looks pretty cool. You know, he's just sitting there hanging out. It just seems like he's just looking at his phone and watching the day go by and all that kind of cool stuff. But what I really like is the framing and the, the colors that's going on with a, a shot like this. One of the things that I always think is really important with photography is like a, just trying to empathize with the subjects and the people that you're working with. So yeah, it could mean, it could, it could really take shape, it could take shape in so many different ways. Uh, if it's somebody who's just like, lost like looking at their phone um scrolling in a really cool location like i mean i think everybody can understand like what that feels like so i mean empathizing is probably not, probably not the right word for that situation in particular but you can still kind of understand like what's going on with the situation so i just try to find these kind of empathetic moments without the day um and hopefully it's usually something that's a little bit more of a that bird was really cool um usually it's, hopefully it's something that's something that's more of like a human element of uh, something besides like scrolling through your phone. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we would probably find some subjects that we could take pictures of like that. You look really cool with that crack, actually. Ah, Sepeña, Hernandez, Sepeña.
I just can't help it but looking at the puppies play. <laughs> it just looks so peaceful. I was trying to see if he was going to make some kind of uh, like his way towards me. So in, in situations, sometimes like I try to like kind of, I want to say trick uh, the subject, but I almost kind of play it off and shoot one way and have somebody else walk towards the frame so I could kind of set something up. Um, but he was on a mission, so he had something else on his mind. So it didn't really work out the way that I, I wanted it to, but I'm going to keep on playing with the puppies for a little bit. It running so crazy. I kind of, I, I, I'm envisioning a shot if I can just get them in a tight area and I could crop out. <laughs> it was so funny. I want a dog. You have no space for dogs in New York. No space. I just can sometimes I get lost in, in situations. It just look it just look really it look really fun. I wish I was a dog for that sec. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm beef. So with situations like that, I mean, I guess everybody can understand what it's like to just like, you know, just, everybody just chilling on a Friday and like just taking it easy, like on a long day at work. So, uh, I mean, everybody loves animals. Like if you don't love dogs, it's like, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> I just think it looks really cool how the uh, the buildings look in the uh, in the distance, especially when you have a walkway like this to kind of scale with the uh, the scale of people with the buildings to kind of give yourself um, a more of a relation of you know how small we are in comparison to some of the things that are around us. Um, yeah, so anytime I can get a moment of somebody walking across or something like that, it just looks really cool. Uh, so I can kind of scale it up, especially when it comes to using the 85. Um, this is why I love the 85 so much for reasons like this, uh, especially for shots that you don't want to be too close, but you still want to have a very composed and tight shot. Uh, 85, especially the 1.4, is really important to kind of give yourself a good amount of distance, but still have it fast enough in order to uh, you know, capture something that at a really good speed. So. As of right now, the day's kind of winding down a little bit and just notice that there's a, a bunch of people like waiting on the line for a bus or something like that. It's kind of hard to kind of tell, but I'm going to kind of work around the area a little bit to figure out like what's going on over there and see if I can find any really like really cool situations. Maybe um, I can get a couple more portraits with my 85 or maybe I can just hang out across the street and snipe a couple more people from a distance. So, um, dude. Right now, I'm, it's kind of crazy to me that those people are just hanging out on the side uh, and on scale with everyone else is like waiting for the bus and then like the Paramount sign is kind of right in the middle as like a divider. So it's kind of interesting to like kind of play around with that. I've noticed them across the street also, but I couldn't really tell what they were doing. So it just makes it like kind of cool to see them just really just hanging out on a Friday. Like everybody wants to hang out on a Friday. So we kind of know what that feels like. So. Uh, see if I can find like, more cool ways to kind of angle those guys to hanging out over there. I'm just doing slow shutters in the traffic right now. So I kind of have like a, 
an idea in my head for like a visual story throughout the day, like a morning day and uh, morning day, but like morning lunch and like night, kind of like uh, your whole cycle. So like um, those are little fun points for the day that I like to do, like all the, all the little kind of stuff that I, phot I photograph. So traffic is definitely one of them, and finding cool ways to kind of push the traffic. So I want you to get some of this action with the bus. That was tight. It's always cool to shoot, try to get, taking portraits of people on the bus is always a, Sometimes when you get like, uh, I started to run and then I uh, it was, my shutter speed was at 250th of a second. So it's close to being not <laughs> sharp enough. So, but I get, um, I get really uh, stuck on too. I try to shoot as many photos as possible within the time. So I, that's why I always kind of prefer shooting with like uh, one of the fastest lenses, like a fastest lens like 85 or something like that. Um, it looks cool with this guy. So one of the important things about like, I guess, like empathy is key is like, you know, like there's, there's so many different stories that you can hear, but like, if you have, you have like the moments of where like a dad is walking with his little daughter on his shoulders, and like, this is kind of like what it's all about. You know, I, I think that like, if you can find a respectful way to capture that moment, that is, uh, is the most inclusive feeling of a human being that it actually exists, honestly, so. And it's something so simple, you know, like, I, I, um, I just think that it's really cool to be able to, you know, show someone that photo, even if it's not the best photo, like, technically speaking, but, like, that is, like, partially, like, what kind of makes all these moments worth it, like, you know, I have a little sister, so I know that it's, those days are far removed of me holding her on, on my, on top of my shoulders, but, like, everybody understands what that feels like, and I think that's, uh, Besides everything else, that's like that's what I kind of do it for, you know. That that was uh, that was cool. So hopefully, I can find at least one more. My I have the right camera settings. <laughs> slower. Maybe a little bit slower. I just want to try a couple more. So sometimes when you do the motion blur, you don't get all the cars to, you know, drag at the same time. So, I'm just trying to get that right. So yeah, but sometimes in situations like this, I uh, I just like to get um, pretty much like a good feel of, say if I'm looking for one particular shot so much that I can't find it, I try to find other things to help my situation and like keep, keep my blood flowing. And then shooting the city and shooting cars moving and you know, all that kind of action is something that will always 
just finding a really cool road and an, an awesome cityscape behind it is, you know, is one of the things that always makes me feel good. So like, if there's a situation where I like if I can't find the shot that I'm looking for per, uh, per se, it just always makes me feel good to do something like this. So we were walking around a little bit around the overpass area. Um, we're just trying to focus in on figuring out what exactly we wanted to capture around that area. So like. Uh, I started shooting a little bit by the overpass and we stumbled upon this really dope dog park. Um, and I think that like, sometimes I get lost in these little moments throughout the day of like, you know, these very like, you know, normal acts of like <laughs> human kindness of, you know, people literally just watching their dogs and feeding their dogs while they're, you know, running around in the park and the, pugs, the dogs look so free and, and carefree and stuff like that. Like, I just wanted to capture some of these things sometimes and really, I think it's important to kind of break it up mainly because there's a, uh, you just had to find empathetic moments throughout the day um, that sometimes you just want to be relatable rather than uh, always be so contradicting or just being controversial or whatever whatever the case that is. And then like and through all the midst of all this busyness and commotion and like you know people watching their dogs run around like maniacs, you know like there's a dad walking with his daughter on his shoulders in the midst of all this traffic. I mean the reason why I like photos is looking at I used to look at family photos and I used to. You know, remember being that child on, on my pop's shoulders or hanging out with my mom or on the couch. So, like, being able to catch, you know, hit this father with his daughter is just one of those dope things that makes it feel real. Um, and I empathize with that 300%. So, um, I always try to find things that I gravitate towards that I'm genuinely interested in. So, like, seeing, like, you know, since I couldn't find, like, another dad walking around with his daughter on his shoulders, which would have been sick, but I couldn't find that. Um, I just gravitated towards the traffic and then a lot of the, the way that the traffic was moving and like just getting the cityscape of Seattle in the background um, and then in the midst of all that I got somebody wearing um, a mask on their face as if it was still like smoky outside so you know it's kind of one of those things where you, you just put yourselves in the right situation um, especially when it comes to photography um, so if, even if you don't get what you want all, all the time something might come to you which inspires you um, and you'll be able to document that as well too so I think the biggest point to take away from this whole experience, especially from this last couple of minutes, was um, you know empathy is key, and one of the ways that you can show empathy is whether it's through documenting, you know, photographing, you know, like parents' love, or you know, documenting just people on the bus and understanding like what it's like to be on that long bus ride after a long days of work. Um, we all can empathize with it for that moment, so um, and that's why I try to center my uh, center this part around.